I want to welcome you to Heart of a Shepherd and alert you this is a little bit of a departure from our typical study. Now this is really taken from a devotional that was originally written February 2024 and it is from the book of Hosea. Well I want to begin with the title and it is this, Illegal Immigrants Can Be the Tool of God's Judgment and then a biblical perspective from Hosea chapter 7. Well, to make this more immediate, more applicable to those of us who are citizens of the United States, I want to pick up on the news of the last couple of days, and that is that the Senate, the United States Senate, failed to impeach Alejandro Mayorkas. Now, I might have said that wrong, but he is the United States Secretary of Homeland Security. And watching the failed attempt to impeach him has motivated me to republish a Bible study that I did first publish in February 2024. Well, an observation. Tragically, our nation's leaders have again demonstrated their feebleness in holding leaders accountable for their failure to uphold the Constitution and laws of our country. I watch the unfolding of daily news in our nation and especially our capital, and I realize we're living in a lawless society, but I would suggest to you that the greatest criminals of our day are the ones that are actually in Washington, D.C., supposedly upholding the laws of our nation. Now, I realize in Romans chapter 13, we're to pray for all those that are in authority, and I do. But at the same time, the responsibility of those in authority, according to Romans chapter 13, is that we would live in peace. Well, we are not a nation living in peace. President Biden, his cabinet, the Democratic Party are selling out our future as a nation. Even the Republican Party are complicit in the destruction of our nation. Even as a military-aged Chinese men pour across the southern border of the United States and are hiding within the interior of our country. Drug cartels have overwhelmed our nation's security and tens of thousands of American youth are overdosing and dying from fentanyl addiction. Oh, how I wish that our nation would turn back to the Lord, that moms and dads would realize they're doing their children no favors at all by uh, uh, isolating them, even insulating them from the realities that they are created as spiritual beings in the likeness and the image of God. It is the failure of the churches and the failures of the homes that is bringing our nation to the brink of destruction. Well, tragically, young people's disillusionment uh, illusionment with the world and society, I believe is directly related to the American family's failure to bond as households. Tragically, many families throughout our nation do not have fathers in the home who are bearing the responsibility of guiding and training and providing for their children. Many have single mothers, and tragically, across the board, it seems that we have absolutely neglected the responsibility of teaching our children the basics of what is right and what is wrong. No wonder we're growing up in a society in which our own young people are criminals and shoplifters and seem to have no fear of law. Why? Because we're living in the midst of a lawless society. And so the result is that our society is bent on self-destruction. Now, all this while, most churches in the United States, and I'm speaking to many of you that go to these churches, they are content with entertaining the masses rather than calling saints and sinners to turn from their sins to the Lord. How long before we demand as a people that we be truth bearers and truth hearers? Well, we are not the first nation to rot and decay from within. And the history of ancient Israel that's recorded in the book of Hosea offers ample evidence that without a spiritual awakening, there is little hope for the United States to turn back 
from the brink of destruction. I do want to invite you, open your Bible, look with me at Hosea chapter 7, and consider with me the signs of a decaying culture and a dying nation. Now this is a repeat of that which we studied back in February, but watching the unfolding of the news and the failure of our leadership reminds me we need to be reminded of what and who our God is but also of the failure of nations that have gone before us. And so we're reminded in Hosea chapter 7 that God is compassionate and forgiving. And even at the midnight hour for Israel, the Lord declared, and I quote, I would have healed Israel. Then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered and the wickedness of Samaria, for they commit falsehood, and the thief cometh in, and the troop of robbers spoileth Without Doesn't that describe the United States? Falsehood, lies and liars, thieves, and a troop of robbers spoileth without? Surely we are facing that with the illegal invasion that we're having not only as a nation, but the failure of law enforcement to enforce the laws and judges to uphold it. And so as we open our Bibles and we look at Hosea, we're reminded of Ephraim. Ephraim was the principal tribe of the northern ten tribes and Samaria, which was the capital city. They were all guilty. They were guilty of being liars, for they had committed falsehoods, thieves, and robbers. And though the Lord declared, he knew, and I quote, all their wickedness, and yet they continued in their sins. Well, verses 3 through 7 points the failure to the leaders. Israel's leaders celebrated the people's wickedness, even as we're watching Pride Day and the, and the colors of the pride flag uh, emblazoned on the White House. We were having uh, pedophiles teaching our children in public libraries. What have we become as a nation and how long will we suffer the idiocy of it all? In fact, the Bible says in Hosea chapter 7 and verse 4 that the people were burning in their lust like an oven heated by the baker. Well, the king, we read in verse 5, drunk with wine, demeaned himself with those who scorned and mocked Hosea and the Lord. As the leaders faltered, the nation failed, and none called on the Lord. Well, we can come to Hosea 7 and verses 8 through 12, and we find that Israel's compromise with people of other nations. Well, rather than, uh, rather than embrace their national identity, that is Israel, as the Lord's chosen people, Ephraim, which was the principal tribe, we read compromised his sanctity. In verse 8, they mixed himself among the people. Like cancer that goes unchecked, Israel had allowed the influence of the heathen, that is the non-Hebrew people, to eat away at their identity and destroy their national sovereignty. Well, my friend, that's what we're doing as a nation. We're allowing in not just thousands or hundreds of thousands, we're allowing in millions who despise the liberties that we cherish. They hate the foundation of this nation, which is, whether you like to accept it or not, which is fundamentally based on the scriptures. And so we are allowing in, like Israel of old, a heathen people who despises. Ultimately, they are a cancer in our midst. And yet, like Israel, desensitized to the evidence that, verse 9, strangers have devoured Israel's strength. The nation's wealth was wasted, its power and influence were ruined, and yet the people were proud, and they refused to humble themselves. Sadly and tragically, that's who we are. In fact, as you continue to read in verse 11, rather than turn to the Lord, we see the description that God had for Israel as being a silly dub without heart. That is simple, common, foolish. Well, rather than cry to the Lord in their affliction, the nation turned to diplomacy, appealing to Egypt and Assyria. And how many times have we watched? We are a nation rich with resources. 
but we go like carpet baggers to different nations that are actually our enemies begging for oil when we have the reserves here that would be all that we'll ever need as a nation. And so Hosea warned that Israel would be brought down and become like a bird ensnared in a net and the Lord would chastise them. Then we read God's lamentation for Israel, verses 13 through 16. Israel fled from the presence of the Lord, and we read, he declared, verse 13, destruction unto them because they have transgressed against me. Although well, the Lord had redeemed and chosen Israel, the people had rejected him and turned to lies. They, in verse 14, they cried pitifully in their afflictions, but we read they continued in their drunkenness. Thinking about the use of an abuse of alcohol in our nation, of drugs, of particularly illegal drugs, fentanyl that is flooding our market, uh, marijuana, which is legal in so many states, and we really don't know the lasting effects of these drugs. But surely it's having a terrible effect on us as a culture. Well, we read in verses 15 through 16, For all the Lord did to turn Israel back, nevertheless they set their hearts to do evil. Well, a closing thought from Hosea 7. Consider the news headlines of our nation and world today. There is, even as I'm speaking, a mass of humanity that is moving through Western Europe and creating havoc in the Western nations. We have a mass of humanity coming across the southern border every day, greater than any movement in human history. We are witnessing the dilution and destruction of Western culture that a century ago was the very heartbeat of biblical Christianity and the womb of gospel missions. Hosea's warning to Israel in Hosea 7 and verse 8 through 10, it should stir the citizens of the 20th first century to re recognize the dangers. We are, as a nation, being invaded by people who do not share our faith. They despise our values and our patriotic pride. We are governed by a godless, immoral, drunken lot who loathe the Bible and scorn our faith and constitutional liberties. We are, in their eyes, a despicable people. And tragically, we the people are under attack by our enemies that are invading us and by the enemies of our nation that even sit in the highest offices of our land. And we are responding like a silly dove without a heart. Well, I would close with saying, God bless America but I'm going to close with saying, God help America. If we don't turn back to the Lord as God's people, if we don't insist and seek churches where God's word is preached and taught and we are challenged and even convicted, there is no hope for America. We must turn back to the Lord. And I urge you to not accept anything less than that. God bless you. Thank you for hearing what might be considered a rant by some, but it is truly the heart of a shepherd. Bye-bye.